Hello everyone and welcome to this basic tutorial on creating a regression equation. Within this tutorial we will be using the data set that I have provided here for you within the table. This data set provides information on 10 students, both the number of hours they studied for the exam, which is our variable x, and the exam score they received, which is our variable y. All of the information needed to calculate the correlation coefficient, or Pearson's R, was included in this table and has already been calculated for us so that we can focus on the regression equation. You can see below the table I have listed Pearson's R is equal to 0.82. That was the correlation found for this data set. In order to calculate or, sorry, create our regression equation, we will be following this model where y prime or the predicted y will be equal to byx, which is the slope, times x plus ayx, y, ayx being our y-intercept. Now, first what we need to do is calculate what the slope is. So for this example, we will be taking the standard deviation of y, dividing by the standard deviation of x, then multiplying by r. The standard deviation that we've already calculated for y, as we can see over here in our table, is 11.5706. So I will put that in the numerator. So 11.5706 divided by the standard deviation of x, which if we look down in our table is 2.1628. So I will list that in the denominator, 2.1628. And we will multiply that by Pearson's R, which I had circled, which I calculated earlier, is 0.82. So first we will divide 11.5706 by 2.1628, and that number is 5.3498, and then multiply that by 0.82, the Pearson's R. Once we multiply this out, our final number is 4.39. So this is our slope for our equation. So we could go ahead and actually start writing out our equation up here at the top. So y prime is equal to 4.39x. We leave x in because we want to be able to plug in x values and obtain y. So we have the first part of our regression equation. The second part is our y-intercept. So where does our line cross the x-axis, or sorry, the y-axis at x equals zero? So in order to calculate this, we first need the mean for y. If we go back to our table here, we can see the mean for y is 79.9. So 79.9 minus byx, which we just calculated up here, to be 4.39. So 4.39 multiplied by the mean of x. So looking at our table, we can see the mean of x is 4.7. So reducing that down, we still have 79.9 minus 4.39 times 4.7. Those two numbers multiplied together equals 20.63. So now we just have one last calculation to do, and that is to subtract 20.633 from 79.9. And the result is 59.27. So this is our y-intercept, or when x is equal to 0, this should be the y-value, or where the line crosses the y-axis. So we can go ahead and put that back into our equation, or into our equation up at the top. So we should put in 59.27. So now we have our regression equation. So y prime, or the predicted y, is equal to 4.39x plus 59.27. This is our regression equation. Now why don't we go through making some predictions? So let's say, for example, we have a student who studied zero hours for the exam. And we want to know, based on a regression equation, what can we predict that student's score to be? Okay. Now, using this equation, what we will do is take 4.39, multiply it by whatever our x is, in this case 0, then add 59.27. Now, of course, anything multiplied by 0 is 0. 
So 0 plus 59.27 is 59.27. This is kind of, I guess, maybe a trick calculation because we already knew this. Because we knew that when the line crosses the y-axis, which is, of course, at x equals 0, our y-intercept, which we had already calculated, was 59.27. Okay? So that is where our line will cross the y-axis, which will be, to be approximately right here within our um, graph, uh, right here on the right-hand side. Now let's go through calculating two other values for x. So again, we have 4.39 multiplied by x. In this case, let's say we have a student who studied three hours plus 59.27. Now 4.39 times 3 ends up being 13.17. And we add that to 59.27 to get 72.44. So based on this equation, we would expect a student who studied 3 hours for the exam to get a 72.44. So we could actually plot that here within our graph as well. So down here, of course, being the hours studied on the x-axis. And on y, we, of course, have the exam score. So let's say three hours study. So down here on the x, we go up to 72.44. So that would be approximately right there. Now let's try to find another point. On, in our using our regression equation. So let's say we have a student who studied nine hours. So what we do is plug that into our regression equation. So we have 4.39 times 9, the number of hours, or x, plus 59.27. Doing the first calculation, 4.39 times 9 is 39.51. If we add that to 59.27, we get 98. So going back to our little graph here, if we go across to 9 hours studied and go up, we should go to 98.78, so approximately right here on our graph. So we could actually take these lines now and actually, sorry, draw a point that would actually intersect all of them, and of course mine's not completely accurate here, but approximately there. That's what our regression equation line would actually look like. So you could see here that, let's say, for example, someone studied six hours. If we go up to where that is on our line, we could see they're probably going to get approximately an 85 uh, on their test score or on their exam. So this is the basic way you would go about creating a regression equation and then plugging in values for x to predict y.